Hello everyone and welcome to my JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. What is JNSQ you might ask? It stands for Je ne sais quoi and it's a mod that alters the default Kerbal system by increasing the size of the planets by roughly 2.7 times, adding new planets and moons and such, and in general making things look a whole lot better as you can tell from Kerbin in the background there. And so it was visually appealing, uh, it's meant to be a little bit more challenging for veteran players with the stock parts, and yeah, I've been looking at other people I know have been playing it for a while. I'm usually not an early adopter. Uh, I wait until people tell me that it's okay, <laughs> and, that, and then I start playing with mods. But uh, yeah, along with JNSQ, I also was interested in using Blue Dog Design Bureau for, I think, the first time, maybe the second time. Uh, I do not normally use Blue Dog Design Bureau. But I decided it was time because I saw some nice images posted by the modder in charge of it. And I, yeah, I, li I like pretty pictures, basically. And this is hopefully going to be a series that has a lot of beautiful views. I'll talk more about the other uh, mods that I've got in here. There aren't too many, but there are a few. But let's get started on a career mode. And then uh, we'll talk about it along the way. You notice Kerbin, the land masses look a little bit different. It's not our normal sort of Kerbin. So keep that in mind. Gonna start a new career. And we're gonna call it just JNSQ, I suppose. And I'm going to... I'm not really NASA. I'll go... Let, let's go with this BDB one, I suppose. I don't know what that is, actually. I should have brought my own... But okay, let's go with that. We'll have a lot of BDB parts. So looking at the difficulty settings, I'm a little bit worried that if I go away from normal, it might be a bad thing because, well, it's supposed to be more difficult, right? But then again, I want to, I want to have a challenge. So okay, we'll go, we'll go hard, and then I may regret that, but. Allow reverting flights? No. No. Allow quick loading? No. Uh, missing crews respond? No. Uh, indestructible facilities? Yes. I don't need to deal with that nonsense. Uh, don't need stock vessels. Allow other launch sites will be fine. And then um, enable Kerbal experience? Yes. And I want the Kerbals to level up immediately. Uh, we will go with the uh, pressure limits and g-force limits requiring signal for control plasma blackouts all that business and that should be okay blue dog design bureau we've got cryogenic boil off um kerbal constructs comnet ground stations sure why not um we are not focusing on last launch site that's important that uh that can cause problems otherwise we don't have lifetime radiation. Oh, I have Kerbalism. <laughs> yes, uh, I have Kerbalism because I was told that this would be a wonderful combination. Anyway, um, highlight malfunction, sure. Stress breakdowns, I guess. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? I believe in stress. Okay, and those are the settings here for Kerbalism as far as I know. And then we've got KSP wheel. We've got SSTU and Boil off is enabled there too, and textures unlimited here. Okay, so that's basically what we've got. Let us begin. I might want to change the flag at some point. I have not played at this scale, 2.7x. I have never done so. So this is going to be a new experience for me, and that means that I'll get to tell you how I approach things. It's not going to be... A uh, normal tutorial, that's for sure. Uh, if you are not familiar with Kerbal Space Program, this is probably not going to help you. But if you want to see an approach to some sort of a random scale here, we can talk about that. For instance, let's get a sense. I have seen a Delta V map, but I'll tell you how to figure out what kind of Delta V you need to get into orbit. That might be helpful. Oh sort of stuck on this tracking station got it thing okay there we go um so let's say you wanted to figure out from oh a random world uh what the orbital velocity is and you know well you could get from all the other stats but the easiest way is look at the escape velocity and i'm gonna get my calculator out see that escape velocity 
uh, take it and divide by, sorry, just gonna be math, uh, divide by the square root of 2. And we get 3960. That is actually the orbital velocity right at the surface. Right at the surface. It's 3960 meters per second. Now, on Kerbin, the orbital velocity is 2300. So this is 1600 more than that. So I'm going to just go ahead and assume that we're going to need about 1,600 uh, meters per second more delta V than I normally planned for Kerbin. Uh, so we're talking about mm, 5,600. That's what I'm looking for to get into orbit around this. And the reason for that is that, well, the loss due to gravity is about the same because the surface gravity is about the same. And then the drag is about the same because at the lower levels where the drag is most intense, uh, Kerbin's atmosphere, Earth's atmosphere, scale about the same. And I expect it'll scale about the same here too. So, yeah. I We aren't looking at the other planets yet. I, I'll take that. Uh, we, we will do that later. But not, looking at the escape velocity and dividing by the square root of 2 will work for anything. So, keep that in mind. That's your orbital velocity. Now, I'll just uh, mention the other mods that I have, and maybe I can capture um, my notepad so you can see them as I mention them. Okay, here we go. So, this is it. These are the mods. Uh, Textures Unlimited, Antenna Helper, Better SRBs, Boodog Design Bureau, Community Category Kit, Community Resource Packs, Pack, uh, Distant Object Enhancement, Environmental Visual Enhancements, Alcam BDS, je ne sais quoi, uh, Raster Prop Monitor, JX2 Antenna, KAS, that's Kerbal Attachment System, Kerbalism, Kerbal Constructs, KIS, that's Kerbal Inventory System, Copernicus, KS3P, uh, MechJeb2, Final Frontier, Persistent Rotation, Plant Shine, uh, Ruplume and Ruplume Stock Configs, Restock, ScanSat, Scatterer, uh, smoke screen, SSTU Labs, Texture Replacer, Curve Alarm Clock. I've got a config that adds MechJeb to all the command modules. There's a Genesee Qua Sun Boost config that I threw in, and Module Manager. Now, uh, for some of these, they had multiple uh, folders inside the zip, so I haven't included uh, those additional folders that are, you know, supplementary mods and all that. Uh, if you downloaded all these mods and unzipped them to your folder, you should get everything. Okay, so that is the idea there. Those are my mods. So it should be an interesting challenge. And I'm going to talk about how to build a rocket that will get uh, 5,600 meters per second of delta V. So, and that's not what the delta V map for Genesequa says. It has some lower number, but uh, important. Whenever I say how much delta V I think I need, it's always the vacuum delta V. Uh, so sometimes Delta V maps include a mix of sea level and vacuum and do all sorts of complicated business like that. Uh, I don't. It's always vacuum Delta V. The only time I use sea level anything is for the thrust to weight ratio of my first stage. After that, it's all vacuum. And I always use the vacuum Delta V, so keep that in mind. Now, it looks like we don't have to launch a Kerbal right away, which is good. Uh, we should take a look at our contracts, actually. I uh, need to get the normal stuff, launch something, get to atmosphere, maybe get to orbit. So launch our first vessel, yes. I don't have any contract configurator or any other uh, contract packs yet. So there is that. Um, I'm gonna escape the atmosphere. So that's our first goal. Now, I want to do this as cheaply as possible, but I'm not going to use the Vanguard uh, probe. <laughs> I might use the Vanguard rocket, but not... The Vanguard probe is this one. So, we've got... Oh, the, the stock music has come on. Uh, so this is from Blue Dog Design Bureau, and they name things different from what they originally were. So, but I know what they are, because I've done these things uh, in Realism Overhaul. So this is a Vanguard probe, <laughs> uh, but I don't like it, it's too spiky. So I'm going to skip the Vanguard probe. There's also the asterisk. That's that one. That's the first French uh, launch. This is Explorer 1. It's called the CNO probe core. And whoops. But it's, it's a very nice one. It's about 10 kilograms. And it's got all sorts of science on it. It's got a command module. It's got comms. 
And uh, some of this, uh, the quality stuff and all this business is Kerbalism. It actually has part failures involved. Or fun. And so experiment, 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 experiment. Lots of science to be done here. I don't know why a seismic scan. That's definitely not a normal Explorer 1 thing to do. Hard drive for the experiment stuff. There's a reaction wheel even. And there's SAS. It's like... Of course, the real Explorer 1 wouldn't have had, a, had SAS or a reaction wheel, but, well, this is how it is, this is how it is. So, I, I like this look. It's expensive, though. $1,100 on its own. Well, $1,000, and I don't know how the extra 100 gets in, but okay. Um, so, if we really, well, I don't know, the Vanguard probe is also expensive. Um, it's actually got all the stuff, too, does it? Does it have SAS? I didn't expect it to be so... Yeah, it's got SAS. I didn't expect it to be so full-featured, considering it's the Vanguard probe, and it's 1.7 kilograms. Hmm. But it's not got a reaction wheel. The reaction wheel's gonna help us. I mean, it's a little bit sad that we're gonna have to build a bigger rocket to get this to orbit. Maybe later on we'll send that gnarly probe up, just to see how small a rocket we can do it with. So we've got this, and what we want to do is basically use the same setup that used in real life, which Blue Dog Design Bureau allows us to do because it's got the little SRBs that it sort of came with. Uh, that's this little sod rocket, and this one has 1.5 kilonewtons in here. In real life, it had 6 kilonewtons, and well, but real life is much bigger. Uh, real life, uh, Earth is still about four times bigger than Kerbin is right now in Je ne sais quoi, so... It's a lot bigger, and actually the efficiency of this solid rocket is the same as in real life. Uh, so that's interesting, um, but anyway, it should be sufficient for our purposes. But you don't need to pay attention to how the, to set up this stack. It tells you in the description and to some extent if you know what you're looking for. But we need a decoupler now, and that decoupler is... Um, th uh, not this one. This one. See, it says use on the Sieno Vicenza stack between the 1x and 3x stages. So this fellow uh, goes here. And then you go back to the SRBs and get the 3x one. And then uh, we need the decoupler for it. And that's this one between the 3x and 4x stages attached to the hidden node at the top of the 3x motors. There. Aha. Okay. Because the, this pack of 11 SRBs, identical to that one in those three, um, wraps around that stack of three. And that's how it, ha how it was in real life for the Explore 1 probe. Uh, so after that, we get to have a decoupler. And you notice the fairing that goes around that. This is how it looked at the top of uh, the Juno rocket that launched Explorer 1. And now we are going to build the rest of the rocket. Well, we're not going to build that rocket. I think we're going to build... Well, let's see. We're just trying to get to, to exit the atmosphere. So I guess, guess we don't need something too difficult. Yeah, let's see. We can probably go with... No, something smaller. This 100. Yeah. So maybe two of these. And then this Viking engine. This is the Vanguard engine. And so well, the engines we have right now, the Sandstone is actually the Redstone engine. And uh, that could probably push this to orbit, but we're not going to orbit yet. So we'll build a rocket around this engine to get it to orbit. And um, it's got, you know, the, these engines are all pretty crappy in terms of efficiency, but we're talking about something that can lift 14.3 tons off the ground. And right now, we are limited to 18-ton rockets anyway. Um, we've got the Vicenza stacks, uh, the Flea, which everybody gets at the start uh, in stock. And then there's this SRB that has pretty good vacuum ISP, 7.6 kilonewtons. Uh, this is sort of like a star stage in a way. Um, maybe, maybe like the Grand Central stage on some of the upper Thor rockets. Uh, or no, this looks more like the Grand Central one. But these are all little SRBs that help push 
things to orbit early on. This engine is like the AJ-10, the early AJ-10. We probably need fins. We've got a nice assortment of fins now. Um, this basic fin, this aerodynamic fin, and that aerodynamic stabilizer are all the same. This is double the price. And that's way more expensive. That's like a uh, Thor fin. Uh, nah. Let's see, these are better. We don't need anything too comp. These are sort of like scout fins, maybe not. Okay, so what I'm gonna call this is Vanstone. Sort of a mix between the Redstone and oops, and Vanguard, in a weird way. We still don't have a delay on engine ignition, so we can ignite as soon as we let go. And we do get to throttle, so let's take a look at the fact that this has a thrust weight ratio of 3.67. We don't need that. Um, we can limit that a little bit so that we have more duration. So this is a stockish thing that we can still do. Maybe just 50% will be sufficient. So the reason why there are th two thrust limiters here is because this engine has vernier thrusters. That's these pipes off the side. And they provide a little bit of extra thrust. The main nozzle has 75 kN and then the verniers have 5. Okay, this should be good enough. And it has internal comms, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's see if it works. Okay, we've got some palm trees here. I feel like I, well, it's the sun is setting. I don't want to wait overnight. I guess we'll launch it now. SAS on, throttle is up, and actually I want these to happen immediately when I activate those. Okay, and launch. So we've got MechJeb, and but we're going straight up, but I'll probably let it control it a little bit. This may be overdoing it for a first launch. But then again, at least we're not launching a Kerbal. Okay, let's see. We've got apoapsis and periapsis, but not time to apoapsis and periapsis. Okay, we can coast a little bit. And ignition. Again, six seconds. Now, the real thing, they immediately fired, but... We can... sort of be more careful about it. Okay, I mean, that's, that's already well above the atmosphere. Let's see about our sciences. So, um, this is still in the atmosphere. I'm gonna start the telemetry, but it needs 30 seconds to accumulate, it looks like. That T minus. And we can see the percentages. I think this means that it's worth one. Well, was worth 1.1 science. Now, science is handled handled by Kerbalism. Kerbin flying, Kerbin space low here, trans transmitting now. We've already got 13 science. We achieved our goals, but you see, it takes some time to transmit the science. We've got very limited electric charge, 30 units. But the problem is insufficient storage. It's only got 500 kilobytes. And so it's running out of capacity while it's trying to send the stuff. Now, the Geiger counter is actually the main instrument for Explorer 1. That's what it was famous for. I want to see and we are still transmitting as a time warp seems to have been at a faster rate okay um yeah eventually explorer one suggested the existence of the van allen radiation belts it was tossed to a higher orbit than this even even if you scale things 
but then uh, subsequent probes confirmed the existence of the Van Allen belts. Okay, wait, we're going down again. I don't want to do that. So, final SRB. This will die once it goes down, so... Let's hang out here for a bit. I don't think we're gonna get the radiation stuff this time. I don't even know if we're gonna get down to transmitting that Kerbin space low. Well, Kerbin re-entry, and that's fascinating. Just automatically getting all this telemetry stuff. Maybe I should have started a telemetry right at the ground. So have we been getting extra? I don't know. 14. Oh, we've lost connection due to plasma. And we're about to blow up. Okay, well, blowing up is nominal and we seem to have new sound effects, maybe? Or... I don't know. Okay, well, we did the contract. We fulfilled the contracts, we're good. Let's go to Space Center, pick up new contracts. Cross the radiation belt. Hmm. Well, I think orbit Kerbin is more important. And lucrative. Well, actually, we got quite a lot of money. The hard does not seem so hard now that we uh, got all that money. All right. Uh, orbit, I guess, cross the radiation belts eventually. All these halls and tests, I don't know. But we we gotta watch out. We're eventually gonna want to upgrade things, and that's a hundred thousand. This is four hundred fifty thousand. The tracking station is three hundred thousand. The mission control is one hundred fifty thousand. So, yeah, I mean, looks like we're running in dough. But most of the money is like the facilities, not the rockets. So to get this to orbit. We are not going to use this engine because it's a little bit underpowered. We're still limited to 18 tons. We're still going to use this, but we're going to go with the sandstone engine. So we know what the capacity of this engine is. How much? Oh, well, that's getting there. Once we put on this engine, we'll basically be at capacity. Boosters? Or we could just dump this fuel tank. In vacuum, we've got 5,700 meters per second, which is more than we wanted. We were looking for 5,600, so this should get to orbit, if I'm right about that. And uh, let's get some fins on. Do we need these control surfaces? Well, they're sort of redstoney. They're only double the other ones, and they look like they're more serious, so that's good. Okay, now let's double check the thrust weight ratio at sea level 1.17. Barely gets off the ground, but that's sort of what Redstone did, or Juno. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. This time we do have to turn. Standard thing for me is uh, to 85 degrees at around 1,000 meters. And then 80 degrees at 2 kilometers, 70 degrees at 4, 60 degrees at about 7-ish. This basically works for both Kerbin in stock or, and what should we call it, Earth. Because again, the atmosphere is not too different. We should get out that information. I could bring out the MechJeb information, but we can just stick to the stuff. I think the little config that I used for MechJeb might allow me to see more information than I'm strictly speaking allowed to, so we'll leave that off for now. And the atmosphere in Genesequa ends at 85 kilometers, so that's why I'm sort of flattening out here now. But we gotta watch out for heating, look at that. So. Well, we could throttle down. Oh, wrong throttle. We were looking at an orbital velocity of 3,900 meters per second, and we've got 2,000 in the little SRBs. So we should be okay. As long as we coast to apoapsis properly. And again, uh, they're six seconds each set, so 
18 seconds altogether, so we can basically go all the way to Apoapsis before igniting them. We might not, might not even need the last SRB this time, unless we... I don't know how high the radiation belt is. How high I, they need me to cross. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, we'll set this to zero. Let's see how well the little reaction wheel can control it. Well, it has control. All right. Go. And set number two. Oh, we do need the last one. Okay. Final one. And we're in orbit. So, I mean, maybe the Blue Dog Design Bureau parts are making it too easy on me, but I really didn't want to do Kerbals right at the start of this, so. I want to try the Geiger counter now. Um, transmit, can we? Not enough space on hard drive. Well, the other, the telemetry just uh, packed it in as much as possible and started transmitting. Let me extend in 10 maybe. Well, this is like, it has this science, I thought it had a lot more science built in, but apparently not. Maybe that's all packed into the telemetry or something. It had all the, that science stuff in the VAB, but here it has just the Geiger counter. Shouldn't it at least be able to do that? Uh, that's disappointing. Oh, I should have done started the telemetry right at the ground level. Well, we'll do it now. We've got limited amount of time with the electric charge. Well, we orbited Kerbin, all right. Well, I don't know if 1,289 kilometers is high enough for the radiation belts. Let's see. So, oh, we lost COM. Um, yeah, we should get into that radiation belt. I don't know if it'll count without communication. It's got a time warp. Got 25 science. I haven't looked at the tech tree yet. We have electric charge. Well, we got signal. And we have crossed into the radiation belt, so that contract is good. Okay, so did we get some science out of it? Hopefully. It looks like it. I guess we'll wait until its electric charge is depleted. Okay, well, that's it. Success, though. Explore Kerbin. Return to Kerbin from orbit. Right, well, that's going to take some extra technology. Okay, put a Kerbal in orbit for 30 days. Now, that's tricky with Kerbalism because they need supplies and happiness and things. Um, but it doesn't have a deadline, so we might as well pick it up. Let's see about the tech tree. Well, basic rocketry is basic rocketry. Seems like we've got some basic stuff already, but keep in mind how poor the efficiency of our engines is. 240, 250 seconds ISP, so not great. Then again, I'm a little bit curious that SSTU decided to put the Merlin 1A here. Well, it is the Merlin 1A, and it's not like it's the Merlin 1D or anything. Okay, SSTU is mainly for shiny things. Again, I'm I'm very very visually oriented when it comes to this sort of stuff. A launch escape system already. Well, that's good. Now, instinctively, I would go down here first in the tech tree, and. I don't know if that's the right way to go now. Solar rays are nice. There's a lot of stuff. Pressurized tanks. I know these are important for Kerbalism, so. And heat shields. Well, if we're going to bring something back, we totally need heat shields, so we're definitely getting that. Engine-wise, we've got tons now. And most of them are SRPs. <laughs> no, that's not true. But there are a lot of SRBs. 
So, if we are going to send a Kerbal up, we've got a pod. We need a heat shield at the very minimum. I'm going to just trust the stock one for now. Okay. We obviously need a parachute, and this still isn't a dedicated parachute class. I'll keep all the ablator on there because I don't know how much I need. Mm, custom deploy. No, we want one of these standard stock decouplers, which can go like that. Very good. The Eto is the right form factor. So let's see. We have a stage like this, and what would be the best imitation of a Terrier engine? This is a first stage engine. Alpha Star maybe? And it's horrible ISP. The Hadar has better ISP by a little bit. But it's, uh, and it's powerful. How much thrust weight ratio does this have? Not very good. Let's get that. Hadar. Okay. That might be a little bit better. Thrust weight ratio is still pretty bad though. That's not quite orbit. And how are we? We've got 2.4 tons, 2.3 something more tons to work with. Thrust weight ratio wise, we can't really add any more. In fact, we should probably reduce how much we've got. So, not with these engines, we can't get to orbit. Okay, well, let's just get a Kerbal into space maybe, but is that worth it? Or maybe we should just uh, do re entry, return to Kerbin from orbit without a Kerbal. I don't know if the radiation scan is gonna work with only 512 kilobytes. Uh, what, uh, what's its hard drive space? This experiment has 12.4 megabytes. Um, what's the actual hard drive space? 512 kilobytes. I guess maybe we can upgrade them? I don't know. But what's the point in having experiments that it can't possibly do? 3.26 megabytes. It's just gonna say that it can't do them. I don't know. We need more power on some of those too. Floor probe has the 250k antenna. Which I sort of like. These others I don't think have anything quite like that. But this one has a big antenna. 2 million, 2 million meters. This is uh... One of the pioneer, early pioneer probes sent to the moon. This is another one of the early pioneer probes sent to the moon, I can tell. Well, this one is pretty light. And it's got the long antenna range. Let's see what other signs we can tell. Well, we've got the mystery goo film camera. <laughs> uh, I mean, because we're going to try and recover this stuff. But maybe we need an extra hard drive. Antenna unit. Labs. Orbital labs segment. That's a big thing though. Apparently that's for a crew. Got a lot of fancy... There's a 9.71 gigabyte experiment. This is uh, 2.5 gigs of hard drive space. How much does it cost after I unlock? Eight, only 800? I'll get one. Let's see. Wow, that's huge. Okay, that's later. But lots of hard drive space. I need a tiny parachute. It's still pretty big. Now we've got thermometers still. I don't know if. I mean, they're definitely not going to work the same. I definitely no, don't need two of them, either. But uh, will the hard drive be good enough? That's the question. Do I need a, another Geiger counter? 
Does this have a Geiger counter? Well, let me assume it doesn't, because the Explorer Geiger counter sure didn't work. Okay, let's go with that as what we were recovering. Do I trust the SSTU modular heat shield? But maybe I have to. Hmm, what are the chances this is gonna work right? <laughs> we need more power. Solar panel, solar panel, rechargeable battery pack. 45 electric charge? We'd do better with solar rays, but they're super expensive. Solar battery. Oh, has a battery and solar powers? Uh, I mean, solar panels? That sounds like a good thing. Yeah, why not? There we go. Camera later. So how heavy is this? Well, it's not as heavy as a pod. 0.4 tons. It's about half the mass. Oh, that's a lot of Delta V, but not a whole lot of thrust weight ratio. We need a smaller tank. So, basic building principle of how much Delta V you want from each stage is that you basically want 10 times the ISP, the vacuum ISP. So, looking for 2,850 meters per second. We put uh, this much, we got 2,456. We put an extra tank, we get 2,000. That's about right, but the thrust weight ratio is a bit low with this engine. And that's the vacuum. Uh, maybe we can dump this smaller propellant. That'll help a little bit. But yeah, I'm not really getting what I want out of this engine because it's too low thrust. All these new fuel tanks to remember the names of. Well, that'll get off the ground, and vacuum ISP is good enough for orbit. It's expensive though, and we've unlocked quite a lot of parts. Just trying to get that return to Kerbin from orbit. Okay, I'm just gonna call this Returner 1. And let's see if this works. Okay, SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. No fins though, I might have wanted fins. We can probably throttle down now. Or, oh, wrong throttle. I'm using a different throttle lever than I usually do for Kerbal Space Program. Okay, next engine. What's the burn time on this? Uh, three minutes, so we better watch out. Uh, will the fairings separate nicely? Looks good. Let's do one of these in the atmosphere. Ten minutes? Okay, well, whatever. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Temperature scan... Well, at least they're not complaining about how much space there is. Oh, wait, but the data is accumulating. Take photograph. Can I keep not enough space on... There's not enough space on the hard drive for the photograph. We need more hard drive space. I mean, why give me... Uh, same thing with the other probe. They gave me a Geiger counter that I couldn't use. Now I've got a camera I can't use. Insufficient storage. Gosh darn it. So I'm, I'm going to need to figure out this whole... Uh, let me uh, set the minimum pressure here. And I'm going to tell it to deploy shoot now. Um, so it's armed. Electric charge is recharging, so the solar panels are working fine. And shut down. Oh, wrong, <laughs> wrong lever again. Okay, shut down. Got plenty to return, even without RCS stuff. 
I don't know what to do about this insufficient storage stuff. I'm gonna start this school observation. Oh, we can't start another another uh, school observation apparently. Okay, we're gonna have to be careful to deorbit when we have communication. Hopefully, we have communication like over there somewhere. All right, we just need to lightly bring it back. No, well, that'll more than do the trick. I see no reason to keep the what has become a service module, so we'll contrive to dump it. Look at those little RCSs. Those RCSs work. And decouple. And this should be able to turn retrograde with the reaction wheel. A radiation scan is happening. Okay, we have communication and we are entering the atmosphere. I'm gonna go surface negative surface velocity. Got some temperature scan data coming in. Got a few points of, okay, fizz warp is fine. A few points of extra science, not a whole lot so far. Keeping an eye on that ablator to see how that works out for us. Okay, well, while well, we get some heating. We have armed the parachute already. This is a very plain sort of heat shield. Hmm. Maybe the charring effect is not working? I don't know. Okay, we've got connection back, apparently. You'd think that the plasma was still pretty intense, but here we are. Oh, we lost it again. Intensity has subsided, but we don't have connection. Hoping those parachutes... Okay, we've got some parachutes. Or a parachute. Okay, and that parachute brings us to a really slow speed, so it's much more than we need. Get all the physical time warp then. Okay, we have a splashdown. It's sinking. It's sinking? Don't sink. Don't sink. What? What? Sinking is a thing? No. No, that's that's not no. Gosh darn it. When did sinking become a thing? Which mod is responsible for this? I want to speak to the manager. Oh, I need to I need to hit land instead. <laughs> That's a change. They want me to use helicopters or something. Great. Uh, does it count though for the contract? Yes, it does. So at least the contract is fulfilled. That that's good. And we got some science out of it, like 10 or so units. But it is sinking to the bottom of the ocean. At a pretty interesting rate. I didn't realize these things were so dense. I mean, it's just a bunch of goo and a cone on top. And a parachute, out of all things. Couldn't they just have left the parachute attached to just float like that? I call it cheats. They should have just left the parachute attached and it'd float. Yeah, I don't I don't buy into the sinking. So what am I supposed to do? I can't I guess uh, Okay, I can abandon the mission. Yeah, so uh, to one extent it seems a little bit easier because I'm doing probes first on the other hand I still don't have a whole lot of money uh, Considering the part unlock costs and the building unlock costs. I mean, I'm gonna have to increase the launch pad size pretty quickly Let's take a look at R&D. I want these engines, some engines that will be better, but I don't know which ones are really better. Well, 316 is nice. That's uh interesting engine, potentially. 
Uh, what's this one? Adapter fuel tank. Well, okay. There's some adapters. What I really want is the terrier, but the terrier is usually up here. So I guess terrier-like things will be up there too. And we don't have that kind of science yet, but certainly general rocketry, but with 0.2 away, we don't have enough for general rocketry. We need 0.2 more. Okay, anyway, so next time uh, we will try and lean towards... Explore the moon. Uh, lean towards getting a Kerbal up, but probably not for 30 days. We'll have to see how long how long we can do that. But we'll try and get to at above the atmosphere first with a Kerbal into space first, and then maybe to orbit if we've got enough science to unlock a good engine to do that with. For now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.